hello here we go it's friday night and we're live better put my airpods in and just see if i can get some better sound with those let's see how we go so that's good everyone hear me okay hello sunny now i'm getting an echo is anyone else getting an echo or is it just me Hi, Janelle. <laughs> Is everyone coming on okay? And do I sound okay? Hey, Bronwyn. Hi, Helen. Can everyone hear me all right? Because that's the most important thing. No echo, says Janelle. That's what we like to hear. Fantastic. Sunny, well done. You said you finally worked out how to receive the Friday live video. Yay! <laughs> Took us a little while, but we got there, right? Well, you got there. Good job. See, uh, see, here's this clever little thing that I can do. If you say something that I really like, I can do this and put it on the screen. See, Sunny, I've got it on the screen right now. How cool is that? So if somebody asks me a question or there's something I want to particularly draw attention to, I can spotlight it and pop it up on the screen. So that's pretty cool. So let me get rid of that so we're not looking at that all the time. Okay, how's everyone's week been? Everyone had a great week? I hope so. Oh, I just realized I didn't put my phone in, do not disturb. I hope that we don't get interrupted. That was silly of me and it's too late now that I'm already, I can actually, you know what, I can put it, I can leave the stream, my phone, because right now my phone's not on the screen anyway, but it is taking my audio through the phone so just give me one second I'm going to put my phone into do not disturb mode and let That's because the microphone switched off when I changed it over. Tell me if that's better. Are we back? Are we back? Are we back? No sound, no sound. No sound on YouTube either. Yeah, it was my end. My fault. When I put took the phone out, that's better. Thank you, Margaret. <laughs> when I took the phone out, I must have hit the microphone button with my hand and it clicked off All right so thank you guys for letting me know because all right i think it's good yep it's good sorry about all that guys technology and i are still learning how to deal with each other i don't know sometimes if it's it's nearly always user error. It's me. It's not the technology. It's me. 
It was me. Yes, it was, Cherie. <laughs> oh, Al Sunny, you said still nothing. Have you got it now? Is it okay now? You're not good at reading lips, no. Me either. No, me either. I'm back. Yay. <laughs> All right, good. Okay, so I'm going to switch over to the desk and then we'll get started and playing around with some stuff. And you can probably, for anyone who's been paying attention this week, you can probably guess. I'm going to make two projects tonight. You can probably guess what the first one is, which suite is going to be the first one. Does anyone know? You should know. If you've been paying attention, you'll know. Still not very loud. That might be, Cheryl, you might need to turn up the sound on your computer. Have you checked to make sure it's turned all the way up? <laughs> Look, between us all, we'll get it right, yeah? What program? I'm using a thing called StreamYard, which allows me to go to both Facebook and YouTube at the same time. So that's really valuable to me because I've got some people who don't do YouTube and I've got people who don't do Facebook. So people tend to do one or the other. And so that means that it's much, much um, better. Blessings of home. You are correct, Judy. Do you know why? Do you know why I'm playing with that? Because I'm going to tell you because my class featuring that bundle closes tonight. So today is the last day to register for the Blessings from Home class. Give me a second. I'm just going to pop it over the desk. All right. So this beautiful, beautiful suite the first thing you need to know about my online classes is you don't actually have to own the products to do the class, especially if you're in Australia and you're going to be doing it. Um, you're going to be doing it with me. Let's find the bits and pieces. Page 58, 59, 60 and 61. It takes up four whole pages because this is what they call a mega suite. Oh, why is it not working? Okay, we are having issues. This time I don't think it was me though. Let me come back in. Okay. <laughs> Technology. Okay. I think I'll be back. Can you guys hear me? No sound? <laughs> Thank you for your patience. It says, sounds good now. Yay, Cherie. So we're back again. I don't know what happened then. It was working and then all of a sudden it just stopped. So I was about to say what the program was I was using and I think it was a phone thing. I actually think it was my iPhone that had a bit of a, a, bit of a problem. <laughs> so 
I don't know. But anyway, let's go over to the desk and see if we can actually get this to work. It will work out. Thank you, guys. At least I've got you guys to tell me when things are working or when they're not. All right. So can everyone hear me okay now? Go on again. Huh. Interesting. Well, I don't know what's going on. I'm so sorry, guys. Go on again. Huh. It's all good now. See, <laughs> we've, got, we've got people saying it's gone, it's good, it's gone, it's good. I don't know. I'm just totally lost. So I'm relying on you guys to tell me when things are good. The problem, part of the problem is there's about a 10 to 15 second delay between me talking and you guys hearing what I'm saying. So that's a problem because, you know, by the time you guys tell me that there's sound or not sound, I've, it, it might not be true anymore. So anyway, let's just go and see what we happen. So we're going to go with the home and it's called Heart and Home Suite and it's on page 58 or it starts on page 58. There's some beautiful samples here. And then over on this page is all the products in the suite. There's two bundles. It's called a mega suite because there's two stamp sets and two sets of dies. That's what they call a mega suite. And then there's doilies and uh, embossing folder. There's ribbon. There's um, little dots. There's memories and more cards. I don't have these yet, but I'm getting them. Um, there is also the Heart and Home, beautiful Heart and Home paper, the 12 by 12 paper. It's gorgeous. And then over on this page, we've got a close up of the stamp sets. The one here with the beautiful flowers. Now you guys have seen me using this. I know you have. And over here we have this beautiful little honeybee home set, which has got the bees in it. There's three little bees. I did a card with that today, which I think some of you saw. Here it is, this one. And I made. I did the bees. I did the bees on vellum. <laughs> um, I just stamped them with my memento ink and then coloured in their bodies with some um, mango melody um, blends and a little bit of black blends and then that looks sort of cute and it just it's actually a really simple card it's very very simple but it came out quite nice and I love the the hive embossing folder on the vellum and then I've colored over that and that looks really nice so I have been making look lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of cards with this giving you a sneak peek of what's in the class there's this little cute little box and these are the two class I don't normally show them but I am going to show you tonight these are the class cards that are in the tutorial so what is a class okay you don't have to have the products to do the class because I send it all out to you at least if you're in Australia and you're taking up the the supply pack then I will send it all out to you now if you're overseas or if you're not able to um, you're not able to get the supply pack or you don't want the supply pack then my suggestion to you is to just get the tutorial the tutorial is 20 australian dollars if you're overseas like if you're in the states 20 australian dollars is like next to nothing in, in america I, I listened to the news today and i think they said that i think australian dollar is buying about 70 cents us so it is a lot cheaper in the us so if you wanted to buy the tutorial it'll take you step by step explain to you what you need what the measurements are so that you can make them for yourself with whatever you have in your collection um and if you do have these beautiful products you, you can use them to make these cards so this one here do you mean sheree i did this one last week this was maybe you missed that one i did this i was either sunday night or might have been Sunday night and it's embossed in silver and then I've colored it in with the whitewash the whitewashing technique which is one of my favorites so I'm just this one I did yesterday that's just with watercolor pencils it's such a beautiful stamp that's the same one so this card and this card are almost the same except I added a strip of DSP here and this one I added some color on the whitewash so it actually picks a bit of color up not just white yeah and then this one is just, I did this as a reel on Instagram the other day and it's just some of the paper, the DSP and a bit, a little bit of stamping with markers and then I've sponged over the top with my blending brushes. This one we did la last week, was it last week guys that we did this one where we, this is the stained glass technique. I think that was Friday night. Um, and so it's embossed in white and then coloured over the back with blends markers. This one is watercoloured. I actually really love this one. I don't know. This is one of my favorites because I just, I love watercolor. I think watercolor is just such a beautiful medium. So 
this one was for a goes that way um it was for a tutorial bundle that i did in fact that's still running so if you have ordered with me 60 dollars or more this month you'd be getting that for free okay you can buy it the tutorial bundle and i think it's 15 different tutorials all using this suite so it's quite beautiful um, and that's on my blog as well so this one was a slimline card that i did the other day and we used the doilies we used one of the stamps from the blessings of home set and then you just undo it's a little bit of pulling at this but you undo the ribbon and it just opens up like that so it's a pretty little card so i've thrown a few other things in here and there like this die here is from the stitch so sweetly dies which is one of my favorites the rhinestones these are the new iridescent rhinestones which are in the mini they're absolutely beautiful oh my goodness so so lovely your back rose <laughs> all of it has been put on um facebook or mostly on the my main like my public page all of these things have been on there except for the cards that are in the class of course the full cards because that's just for the people who are doing the class and this one that's in the tutorial bundle so um everything else has been on facebook or instagram yeah naked inside i know i was looking at that and going oh i need to stamp over the corner of that or something you are absolutely right sheree you're speaking you might have missed last week so there you go don't worry you can always watch the replays they're all on youtube anyway or um or facebook one or the other okay so let's make a card let's do it um, I'm not even 100% sure what I'm going to do. I pulled out a few bits of cardstock before I started and thought, ah, oh, let's just see what happens. Um, I'm going to use that one, I think. And I've got, I've got a whole bunch of different pieces here that we could work with. And I've got some of my DSP. And we're just going to have a play. So this is probably my favourite paper in the pack. I love the blue and white. I just think it's really, really pretty. And on the back of all these papers, in case you don't know, all the papers got like wood different wood grains on the back um so really really nice the tutorial bundle you should get that at the end of the month judy so that'll be coming your way so there you go oh my gosh jenny that's huge isn't it all those big hailstones golf ball is that's too big all right uh, this is really pretty you know cinnamon cider is a color that i have not it's probably my least favorite of last year's in colors either this yeah but but every now and then i see something and think oh that's really really pretty so you can see it is actually it's like it's do you guys remember we had a color years and years ago this is going to show who's been around stamping up for a long long time we had a color called creamy caramel do you remember that it reminds me a little bit of that but it's more it's got a bit more orange orange in it <laughs> um but creamy caramel was like this but toned down and it was a really beautiful color for anyone who has been around a long time you might remember that and from memory i think creamy caramel was in the earth elements does anyone remember those we don't even have those anymore they were like all your autumn -y colors so the the green in this is garden green okay and you know once again you've got your wood grain on the back fresh freezer is the purple we've got cinnamon cider we've got misty moonlight in the blue We've got pale papaya, which is also in this paper here. It's in a couple of them. Um, and they're beautiful. Really, really soft. Very, very delicate. Looks really nice with vellum. And that's what I've been doing with all, nearly all my cards have got vellum on them, I've discovered. When I'm looking at these, yep, see vellum there. Vellum. Hmm, no vellum on that one. Vellum on this one. Oh, there's um, shimmer vellum on that one. No vellum. Hmm. Not every card has vellum, but quite a few do. And there, see, that's a nice vellum piece. So I'm deciding what should we shall do. Shall we go blue and white tonight, do you think? Do you think we should? Yeah, I'd say you're right, Jean. Well, I joined Stampin' Up! in 2006. So that's 15 years. Well, it'll be 16 years this year. And that, um, that colour was around for a, a few years after I joined. So... So I'm deciding if I'm going to go blue and white, do I want to start with a, hmm, I don't know, do I want to start with a um, crumb cake base and work on that or do we just start with blue, Misty Moonlight? Let's have a little look and see how it looks. Isn't it nice? Really, really nice. 
I'm just thinking too, if I was to put a piece of vellum over the top of that, that would look quite nice. So I can cut this off straight or let's just be a little bit adventurous and maybe rip it. Something different. I don't know. Maybe we love it, maybe we don't. Who likes the rip look? Just something different. I don't do it very often. But every now and then, I've got a cat sitting next to me because he thinks it's his dinner time. And it's, oh, it's getting close. Eight minutes to dinner time. And he knows. So I might have to, I might have to send somebody in to, um, you like the Misty card base? Good. And we like the ripped? All right. Let's just, let's just go with it and see what happens. All right. Something different. Now, will I go sideways? Mm, no, I'll definitely go down. I don't like it sideways with the rib. Right, I'm just looking through my pieces here and I am, I can go with the vellum or I could just go with a white piece. See, I've got a nice, actually I was going to use this white piece on the second card, but I'm thinking I might use it on this one. Maybe, we'll see. That looks quite nice. Now I have got, we've got a couple of options here. I've got the thin, if I want to do a layer of ribbon, this is the thin misty moonlight. Now this is from which, 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 which. So when you're looking for embellishments and papers and things, the best thing to do is to turn up the back. It's really easy to find everything. So the ribbon, that very first one, this is from the Cotton Ribbon Combo Pack, if I can talk properly, and it's um, it's on page 43. So let's go have a little look at it. I like that they put all the stamps and everything in, in the back in alphabetical order for the very first time. Okay, here it is here, and it tells me the two colours are Misty Moonlight and Petal Pink. Okay, they're the two colours in that. There is also um, the denim ribbon, which is part of this suite. And I'm thinking maybe we should go with the denim ribbon because it is part of the suite and, you know, that would look rather nice. Here it is. This is the denim ribbon. We've had ribbon, I don't know if it's absolutely identical, but it's certainly the same kind of ribbon previously. We've had it before. So... The indigo blue set. Yes, I remember that. That was a beautiful, um, it was like a, it was a specialty suite, wasn't it? Like a standalone suite. They had a, mm, a year or two ago, a couple of, couple of years maybe? I don't know. If you think you can hear a cat meowing, you are right. That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my husband says I have I have that too, Jenny. I have the same condition. <laughs> That's what he says. All right, I'm thinking like about here. So where will this go? Yeah, about there. All right, so let's now. I cleaned this craft room about you know the the story. The, there's a story. Well, there's a. I cleaned the craft room up a few weeks ago because. I had to because it was really, really bad. And I have, you know, sort of moved things around. And here's a problem. I cannot find my ribbon scissors. They must be in one of the boxes somewhere. But that's a disaster. I haven't been able to find them anywhere for, ugh, I don't even know how long. It's not good. So I'm managing with my paper snips. But they're not ideal for cutting ribbon, really, let's be honest. There. I much prefer to cut ribbon with my good ribbon scissors. I will find them again. I know they're here. I haven't thrown them away. So, so I'm just putting this over the back and then that's going to sit like that. All right. Let's put this on a piece of white straight up. So this is thick, whisper, not whisper white. It's basic white thick for anyone who... Uh, wonders what what base I use nearly always use the thick it's great love 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 it it does look good with the torn paper I agree Jean you are correct
All right, so if I put this piece on here like this and see I can tie a ribbon or a bow or a knot or something here at the side if we want to. That might look good. So I'm deciding which flower to use. I'm thinking I have the flower here. So let me just let me just grab this. I have uh, some templates set up from the last time that I um, used this stamp so you can see it's already attached to my plate and that's because I made some blanks and I set up a template to make this card. All right, this see there's another card. I haven't even shown you this one. This was one of the cards from my launch and I I thought it turned out really, really pretty. This ribbon is just so nice. This is the open weave ribbon. Love, love, love it. It's so nice. So I'm going to bring my Stamparatus in. So if you haven't got a Stamparatus, you don't have to have a Stamparatus. Um, other people, you know, there's other stamp positions around that also do a great job. But this one does do a couple of fun little things that I really like. So let's... Let's pop this here. So, so long as this goes right into the corner, just make sure it's still set up correct. Yeah, it is. And that's a good thing. If you've got a template set up, you can keep using it. So I'm just going to put my magnet. I put a bit of washi tape, or this is actually masking tape on it to help me pick it up easily. And then I'm going to push this right into the corner. And this is how I had it set up before. So this is actually going to stamp right in there. So I can just put my blank in. This is where you can just cut a whole bunch of blanks and in fact you can even when you're cutting through your die cut machine you can put a couple of these through like two thicknesses thick um, and it will work quite well and I'm thinking I'm thinking I'm going to go with Night of Navy which works very well with Misty Moonlight. We could also go on with Basic Grey that would have been a good choice as well. I've got my ribbon sitting under here because that helps my um my plate sit properly. I'm just going to bring that over, stamp it, give it a good old push. Now the good thing is if it doesn't work the first time, oh my lights all just went out. Give me one second, I'm having some issues tonight aren't I? I know why. <laughs> they think they were on a timer. There we go. That's better. Yay. Better light. <laughs> Probably better than it was before. All right. I've stamped it with navy. Now, the nice thing is because it's sitting in the template there, if I had missed stamped or missed any of this, wasn't happy with it, I can just stamp it again. Okay. Ink it up and stamp it as many times as I need to to get the perfect image. And I love that. That's why I love stamp positioning tools. I just think that they give you such a great result. <laughs> Um, Cherie, you probably, we probably can't say what CRS is on, um, it's can't remember something <laughs> and we can't actually say it on, um, in the comments because I think, um, YouTube would make us hide the comment. Yeah, there you go. Jenny just told you. <laughs> Jenny told you what that is. All right. So I'm thinking about putting this on here and I'm thinking, you're not going to get the problem with putting it on a white background okay is it's not going to stand out as much as we would like it to so of course we're going to doctor our white background and i've got here a blending brush that i've already used for misty moonlight before and i'm just gonna open up my misty moonlight cards uh ink and i'm going to pick up some if you haven't got these these blending brushes are my favorite tool right now I mean I go through stages and you know ask me in a couple of weeks and it'll probably be something else you know I love tools I think I think that tools are what make your card making professional and they make it stand out from whatever you were doing before okay if you want to improve your card making invest in tools now I don't mean necessarily stamps I mean yes stamps are a tool but really the tools I'm talking about are the things that really improve what you're doing so tools are a blending brush is a tool uh, Stamparatus is a tool. The um, I'm just trying to think of some other good examples. Um, 
your cut and emboss machine and dies are tools, okay? So things like that, punches are tools. So anything that you um, can add in to make your crafting better is going to improve what you're doing out of sight, okay? So I'm just going to come in here with the blending brush and I'm going to keep going. And so this is how by telling, this is what I honestly believe, okay? My belief is if you want to improve your stamping, invest in tools and they're going to be the difference between, um, you know, being an ordinary crafter <laughs> and an extraordinary crafter. And my job, as I see it, is to help you guys get the best value that you can get from Stampin' Up. That's my whole thing, okay? If I can help you get great value, then I'm doing my job. And I believe great value is in good tools, okay? And that's where you're going to see a massive, massive difference in how you craft. You just got the new blends, Jenny. That's exciting. Yeah, I got, I've got mine. I haven't used them yet. That's the new colours. Yeah, there's, so for anyone who doesn't know, there is new blends out. I think they're available to customers on the 1st of February. I need to double check that. Um, but basically they will, uh, they are all the skin tones, all the skin tones. So the whole idea, oh, let me show them to you. When I say all the skin tones, all the skin tones, look, how cool are these? So they're all different. And you can go, you know, you've got medium light. So on the outside of the pack, it tells you what it is. Uh, oh, it does. I've just got to find it. It's too hard to read on some of them. That one didn't have it. This one says medium. This one says light. This one says medium deep. And so these must be deep. And I'm just looking to see if I can find it. I just can't read it. But anyway, there they all are. Aren't they lovely? So these are going to be fantastic for um, any skin tones that we want to have um, from very deep to very light. And you can blend them together and make lots and lots of different ones. All right, so now that we put this on the white, can you see how different now this is looking? So it's a, it's a different effect altogether because we've added our colour behind and now this, this stands out, all right? So we're going to colour it in. How shall we do that? We can go with um, watercolour pencils. Now, watercolour pencils, actually, I might just choose them tonight. Watercolour pencils are one of my favourite colouring tools and part of the reason why I love them so much is the fact that they're easy and you get there for a very low price point you get a whole bunch of different colors okay some of the other coloring tools you would be spending a higher amount of money just to get a few colors whereas these you're going to get a whole bunch of colors this is the assortment two there are two assortments this is assortment two and it's got cherry cobbler flirty flamingo cajun crash crust ugh, crushed curry Granny Apple Green, Garden Green, Coastal Cabana, Balmy Blue, Night of Navy, and Gorgeous Grape. So it's a really great, um, great run of colours. The other pack has different colours, okay? The, but I have find that by having both, I have a really, really great assortment of colours. You'll find them in the annual catalogue. So let's find them really quickly for you. And the really nice thing, the annual catalogue, if you look right up the very back, second page in, like, come back on page you've got the accessories index okay so you can look down here under w watercolor pencils page 126 so easy to find here they are and they're in the assortments and bundles page down the bottom you've got the many marvelous markers which is all the marker colors the soft pastels and the watercolor pencils and you've got assortment one and assortment two assortment one is a bigger pack it has it's uh, 27.75 and the assortment two that i just showed you is only 21.75 so that's a really great way to get started with coloring if you don't have a lot of colors to start with so what i would suggest is if you're going to get them you also get a brush with um and some water to put this on i'm using a water painter if you don't have these you can just use a brush and water okay i like these because they help me control how much water is coming out and let's see shall we go with night of navy do you think guys so there are two blues in here that actually look quite similar but they're different when you use them so night of navy is quite a bit darker and balmy blue is quite light um 
it's not true. I don't think the balmy blue is all that close. Let me show you. So when I did these, that's night of navy here in the middle. And here this brighter blue, that's the balmy blue. Now where it's uh, washed out on the edges of the um, petals, that's more close to the actual colour. This is balmy blue. Can you see that it's similar tonally, but where it's in the middle, where it's darker, it really is way too dark to be balmy blue. So um, you might, to get the colours exactly right, you might just need to um, play around with them a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some colour here in towards the center where I want it to be darker and you can kind of be guided a little bit by there's like some shading lines in the stamp so I'm kind of using those shading lines as my guide okay I'm just going to do this flower first then I've got my water painter this is the fine one in the water painters you've got fine medium and broad I tend to use the fine or the medium most of all okay I'm making sure there's a bit of water coming through there's a little bit in there and then I'm going to start pushing that color out towards the end of the petals all right so it's actually pretty simple this is this is a really great way to learn how to watercolor if you're not sure what to do with watercolors I mean you can take them from your ink pads and all that kind of stuff but I think watercolor pencils is the easiest way to watercolor and it looks like you know what you're doing, even if you don't. And we like that, right? <laughs> That's pretty cool. All right, so you can see it's darker in the middle. I'll bring it up closer so you can see. Whoop, trying to be in the middle of the camera. So it's darker in the middle and lighter. Okay. Oh, that's a good point, Jean. You can also use a wink of Stella um, to, to use with the pencils. So um, that's a good point. I have a wink of Stella right here, I think. Here's one. So that's another way and you could add, you know, go over it and move it and it will also move your colour and add some sparkle as well. So that's an alternative definitely as well. All right. So we like Winter Stella because we love sparkle. Now I get to choose what colour I want for my next flower and I'm thinking I might go, seeing as we don't have a lot of colour in this card, I'm thinking I might go a bit bright. How about we add some Flirty Flamingo for our next smallest one? Let's try that. So we're going to go with our bright pink. And we're going to add that into the center. I have my son here wanting something. Yes, Ben, what would you like? Are you taking the cats? Please take them because they need to be fed. Thank you. All right. And you can shut the door so they don't come back in. No one needs to see Crumpet. No, no one needs to see him. Oh, Ben, stop it. Go. They do. They don't need they to. Do. Off you go. <sighs> yes, Mum. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to just add. Now you can see there's a bit of blue appearing in this as well. And that blue is coming from the color that I've stamped. Okay. So it hasn't, it's not as um, pink as we might like because it's mixing up with the blue a little bit. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going down and making sure I haven't missed any comments. I don't think so. You have a question, Cherie. Uh, 12 months before I joined Stamp Up, I thought 72 Derwent watercolour pencils. Oh, I, I had a love affair with Derwent pencils as a child. Oh, my goodness. Um, okay. Really, really honestly, you don't need to have the Stampin' Up! ones. You've got 72 Derwents and you can probably get pretty close to most of the colours. The only advantage of getting the Stampin' Up! ones is that you will have colours that are pretty much in line with the Stampin' Up! colours. But they're, even those are not perfect. So I would probably, I would probably, um, it's up to you. If you had a few host dollars or something to spend, then maybe you might grab them. But otherwise... I'm sure you can manage quite well with your Derwents. I, like I said, I had an apps. I wanted Derwents so badly when I was a kid, and I wasn't allowed to have them because they were too expensive. And I really, really wanted them. And and as an adult, I bought myself a pack of Derwents, and I felt like you know, I felt like a million bucks because I just loved them. Yeah, that's right, Sunny. I know. Gotta love kids. But guess what I bought this week.
just this week I was at, at um, it's, they're not watercolour, <laughs> but remember you were just saying, I couldn't help myself, look what I bought. And I bought these a couple of days ago and I did that because um, they're, they're like in a little wooden box. They were only $13, which is like unheard of for Derwent's. Um, and, I mean, Derwent make fabulous pencils. Here we go talking about something else completely different. But, um, but yeah, <laughs> I waited so many years for Derwent pencils. But, anyway, these, these are my latest acquisition. Um, I don't know when I will use them because I'm thinking, why do I even need these when I've got all these beautiful Stampin' Up! colours? I probably don't. But I think I was just at the counter at Officeworks and they were in a bin next to the counter marked right down to $13 and I'm like, oh, better get those. I might give them as a gift to my daughter or something like that. I haven't decided yet what I'm going to do with them. So I'm going to add, I'm going to use this, the gorgeous grape. I'm going to add a little bit of colour in these little tiny flowers down here. The nice thing about um, watercolour pencils um, is it gives you more control over where your watercolour goes than regular watercolour does. <laughs> so it gives you, I'm just going to try and get all the yellow out of my brush before I move on and use it here. Um, so yeah, it, you'll find if you're using watercolours, you feel like you have a bit more control over where the colour is actually going. All right. That's kind of cool. All right, so the next thing is what colour will we give our leaves? We've got two choices in this pack, Granny Apple Green, which I think might be too bright. That's very, very bright. But Garden Green might be good. Hmm. And in the other pack we have Old Olive. That might be good. I know, really good, right? <laughs> so this is the other pack. You see it's a bigger pack. And they, there's Old Olive in that one. So it's colour number five. Um, I've actually got some of these in my... Um, if, if you do have these, what I do do with them, but these are the ones that are sitting in my drawer, but when I'm travelling with them, I put them in DVD cases like the stamp cases um, and that's really cool because um, you, can see what's, you can see what's in the case and it, tra it uh, means they colour quite, uh, they transport really, really well. Now I managed to get a little bit of um, water on this, so the... the um, leaves have bled a little bit down the bottom but it's not going to matter and anyway if I put a ribbon on oh no I'm not going to put a ribbon on it because I've got that beautiful denim ribbon so I'm not going to be putting any more ribbons on so you can see I'm just adding color to the bottom of the leaves and then I'm going to spread it with my um with my water paper I feel like I've taken way too long to do this tonight I'm sorry too busy chatting and talking and all that. So I'm just going to move my colour out towards the edges of my leaves. You can see I'm not being very particular about it. I'm just pushing the colour around a little bit so it fills in a bit more of the leaves but I'm being quite haphazard with it and that's the beauty of watercolour. Okay, you can you can really um, let it do its own thing. You don't have to be precise with it whereas blends you need to be a lot more precise. I mean they're beautiful, the colours are really true and lovely, but you don't you need to be more precise with those. Okay, so there we go. And I'm gonna add that to this here with a couple of dimensionals. You know what I think makes all the difference to this card is this bit of blending here on the background. Mm. I just used up the last the last dimensional on my sheet, so I'm going to use a bit of the edge. All right, take the backs off. Just like that. Let's pop this here. And I'm going to add some more dimensionals behind here. So that means I need to open up a pack, which is not a problem. For anyone who doesn't know, dimensionals come in the normal size. This is the normal size and also the mini ones. 
and use 300 of them in a pack of the big ones and I think it's 700 and ooh, 720 that's I'm, I'm kind of guessing I probably should know that figure but it's a lot more in the minis because they're much smaller and you get three sheets of those as well and then we've got the black dimensionals does everyone know we have black dimensionals I love black dimensionals this is black dimensionals I wouldn't use them on this card but if I was using putting them onto a dark card they are awesome Okay, line that up so it's in the middle. Now, I'm thinking about adding my bit of ribbon under here. Um, something I do sometimes is I use my bone folder as a pushy tool. And I'm deciding, do I just try a knot? Let's try that and see how we go with that. Or I can tie a trying. I could tie. Nah, I don't think I want a bow. I think I just want a knot. And I need to grab, I think, a better pair of scissors. These are not the best ones. Let's see if I can get them to cut well. No, these ones don't want to cut this ribbon. Um, I might have to come back with, oh no, I can see another pair. I told you I'm missing my ribbon scissors, guys. It's making me sad. I've got to find them. See, much, much better if you have a ribbon, if you have a newer pair of scissors. But the ribbon scissors are the best. And I've told my ribbon, ribbon scissors story before and how I came to get them. So so I'll neaten that up a bit more. Actually, maybe I'll do it now. That's better. Ooh. All right, so we need a sentiment. Where shall we add that? I'm thinking, do we want a long, skinny sentiment? Possibly. Thinking that might be the go. So with that in mind, I'm going to bring in my trimmer. Yeah, old olive is a good colour. So whoever said hello, or sorry, whoever said hi, Linda, on Facebook, I can't see who it is. I'm so so sorry. Um, I feel bad that I can't see who it is, but unless Streamyard knows who you are, we can't we can't tell. Right. So I'm going to use the same stamp set, the Blessings from Home set, which is this one here. This has got Have a Perfect Birthday, and I think that might be nice. I've also got thanking, Thank You for Inspiring Me. We could also do that. So which sentiment shall we use? If we're going to do a long, thin sentiment, I'll use the Have a Perfect Birthday. If we're going to put... Um, a sentiment on a another piece like a punch or we'll use thank you for inspiring me or there's other one here that says we can get through anything together and what a beautiful day for love is nice as well there's a few nice words in this one it's very pretty has anyone got any thoughts on that grab this piece here no one has given me an answer yet. Have a perfect birthday, says Katrina. Well, that's going to be a long, thin one. So let's cut this to half an inch. Oh, and Joan says the same, so it's the right choice. That's good. Right, and I'm going to make this around about the same size as my card front, so about 10 centimetres across, because I can always cut it down. All right, so let's go... Have a perfect birthday. Here it is. And pop it here on the block. Actually, I like to, especially for a long, thin sentiment like this, I like to lie it down and then pick it up with the block rather than trying to put it on my block, which it's easy for me to get it crooked if I do that. So I'm going to, I think I'll go navy ink, not misty moonlight. Let's go navy. Let's pop this right here in the middle. 
of this piece. Oh, is that straight enough? I'm not 100% happy with it, so I'm going to try again. It's close. <laughs> but sometimes I'm very fussy. I like things to be straight. I, I like them to be impossibly crooked on purpose, obviously on purpose, or I like them to be very straight. I'm a bit fussy. I'm going to bring my head in so I can see it better. Let's, that's better. Okay, so this piece is going to go, the only thing is we might lose a bit of our beautiful ripping if we do that. Maybe I'll put it right on the edge. That might be good. Yeah. And I'm thinking we should flag the ends. Okay, this is my pick a, band of, pick a banners punch. I love these punches. We've got a couple of them. And this half inch wide piece is perfect to go in the end and make this end just just spot on. It's just perfect. Much easier than trying to do it with scissors. It's difficult to get it really straight when you do it with scissors. Oop, let's get it out. There we go. See how nice that is. I'm going to do the other end. Put it in there. Make sure it's in as far as it can go. So I always look to check that it's in the right place. Take the back over. And if you need to pop something in underneath to get it out then that's okay I think I made it a little bit of a tight squeeze All right so let's go over this edge I think that's what we're going to do um, do I want to use anything over the edge maybe just slightly I'm just going to use my really um, blending brushes are not the ideal thing to do this but I'm too lazy to get a sponge dauber out of my drawer so I'm just going to zip around this with this we'll be very careful because you can easily go overboard with that now, see the other side was almost perfect. <laughs> I'm just very, very particular. So I want to just pop this on the very top edge. I'm not going to put it on the whole thing. And I'm going to there we go. And it's just on the edge now of that piece there. And I think it looks nice. That's just the right the right place hi thank you very much facebook user ah oh, okay right tell karen to um actually i wonder if i can do it now let me just see if i can zip over there and accept her into the facebook group so she can see it or she can watch it on youtube does she not have youtube that's entirely possible because some people don't um let me just have a very quick look and try and get her into the group so she can watch it Because I know Karen, so I can accept her immediately. So there we go. All right. I have a request, and I bet it's Karen. It is. Okay, she's approved. She can watch now. Thanks, Cheryl. Thanks for letting me know. <laughs> there we go. All right, so we did one pretty card. I think that's nice. Does it need bling? Do you think it does? Because we can do that. We can add some of those beautiful little rhinestones, which I'm so fond of. These go with everything. Yeah, let's add them. <laughs> you can't go wrong with gorgeous rhinestones, in my opinion. So I'm going to pop a medium, a large one down the bottom, a medium-sized one over here, and a little tiny weeny one up the top. There we go. Just like that. Okay, and I will pop this up on YouTube, oh, sorry, no, Instagram, and I've got to remember which social media I'm on, I, I forget half the time, Instagram and Facebook, you'll see this, okay, so if you're following me in either of those places, thanks for telling me, Cheryl, yep, tell her I've let her in. Okay, let's pop that one to one side. Now, does anyone remember about two weeks ago, I think two weeks ago, Somebody requested something, and I'm finally getting around to showing it tonight. Anyone know what it is? What did we say we were going to do a week or two ago? Does anyone remember? Okay, final word on this, guys. If you haven't signed up for the class, tonight's the last night, okay? And it's the Heart and Home class. You don't have to have the products to do the class because I will send you all the pieces. 
unless you're just getting the tutorial only, the tutorial only is 20 Australian dollars. Um, if you're wanting the pack as well, then a $50 order here in Australia, um, you can either go through my online store or you can email it to me. Um, that will automatically qualify for you for the class. There is a class code to use. So if you're not sure, send me a message. Okay, just message me after this and I'll, I'll sort you out. We'll get it worked out. Get you in the side door if we have to. So there we go. Let's pop these away. Okay. So the other thing, no one seems to have remembered what it was that we played with a couple, well, what I said I was going to play with, but maybe I'll jog your memory. Does anyone remember now? <laughs> Here we go. Brave Vikings, guys. <laughs> I don't even know why I bought this set. I have no clue. I just thought it was super cute. I really, really liked it. And I was actually going to um, do this on the um, the white piece that I ended up using on the last card. So we'll just use something else here. I don't know what yet. I'll cut something out. It'll all be good. The Vikings, yeah. <laughs> Remember we said we we're going to do that, right? Whose heritage is, is that? Whose? <laughs> I don't have any Viking heritage in me as far as I know. Mind you, the people say you do those ancestry things and find out all sorts of things about yourself that you never knew, but I'm pretty sure I don't have any Viking in me. I'm pretty sure. Um, I, I do have um, a lot of Irish in me. I know that for a fact and some British too and, you know, all the normal things that most of us Australians seem to have. Um, but, yeah, I have, as far as I know, no Viking. Apparently, um, my children's um, father can claim something to do with Vikings, but I don't know about that. Not for me. All right. So we've got some really cute little sentiments in this set. It says, I've taken a Viking to you. Happy birthday. You've conquered another year or you're strong and brave. You've got this, which I think is a really, really nice stamp. So I'm going to go with, because I want to have kind of a watery scene going on, I'm going to go with some Barmy Blue cardstock which is why I happen to have this colour close by. And we're just going to fold that in half and set it aside for now, although I am going to use it in a minute. So I'm thinking I like this, you, you're strong and brave, you've got this. So let's do that. Now, as you can see, I haven't even opened this set yet. I've sort of got an idea of what I want to do, but I have not even opened it. So I'm looking at which one is the you're strong and brave. Happy birthday. You've got this this one here. So I'm going to put this stamp together. Now, I know some of you have seen me put stamps together before, but I'm, in case anyone hasn't seen me put the stamps together, this is like a game changer, this particular way of putting your stamps together. So if anyone has a wow and never seen that before moment tonight, let me know in the comments. I'd love to, I'd love to see that. <laughs> I know, I like the boat too. True, that's true. Well, how's this for very Irish? My great, great, I think it's great, great. I don't think it's three greats. I think it's two greats. Grandmother was a bit of a remarkable woman. She was the youngest of 21 children. Now, tell me that's not a good Catholic family, right? And she came over here um, to marry... Uh, an English guy that was here and um, ended up settling the entire, for anyone who knows it, the entire Barara area all by herself. She was the first person in the Barara area to be granted a land grant and part of the terms of her getting the grant was, um, oh, I've just put it on a block. Did everyone see how I did that? I was so busy talking about my great-great-grandmother that I didn't even tell you how I did that, but that's okay. I'm going to put another one together in a minute. Now that I've done that, I'm going to do something different with it, totally different. I'm going to do a little Stamparatus technique that I really like. So I'm actually going to get rid of this plate and I'm going to dig up another plate. So 
So this is a, just a different plate because I want to do something different for this. And I'll, I'll possibly use this template again later. Not today, but another day. 21 kids, I know. That's amazing, isn't it? But what she did was part of the grant um, that she was given in the Barrow area, part of the conditions of the grant was that she had to work the property herself for a certain amount of hours every week. So she used to walk from Sydney to Barrow. And for anyone who knows how far that is, like she lived in the Alexandria era, area, that's a long way to walk. And she used to work walk all night to work on her property every weekend. And she would to fulfill the conditions of the land grant. So it was pretty, pretty amazing what she did really. All right. So I'm not going to put this on a block. I'm actually instead going to put it on the Stamparatus. And so this is where I want, here's my, here's my card. Okay. I'm going to pop it in here and just to keep it in place, I'm going to use a magnet like this. And what I want to do is I want to have, I'm putting it with the um, the stamp, the rubber, towards the paper because I actually want to, I want it to be set up where I want it. Okay, then I'm going to bring my plate over, give it a push, and I'm going to pick it up. Okay, it's ready to go. Now I'm going to get myself some ink. Now, because I want this kind of to be a background thing, I'm going to use the same color ink as my cardstock. So it's not going to be really dark. It's going to it's going to be a little bit darker than the cardstock. So it will show up, but it won't be very um, it won't be very dramatic. Okay. So I'm going to pull this over. I'm going to give it a push. Oh, look what I did. I managed to get let's turn this over, shall we? And I'll come back and fix that up later. I overstamped. When I put my ink on, I pushed, I tapped too hard. So what I need to do is I need to tap lightly, make sure there's no ink around the edges, and then I'm going to try again. I'm making sure that my card is pushed all the way into the corner so it's in the same place every time. Give it a push. That's better. Okay. Then I'm going to bring this down by one setting on my this is something that none of the other positions do guys this is this is a really cool thing so then you're going to bring that down I'm going to do it again I'm going to make sure I've got no ink I do have a little bit there and then I'm going to bring that over stamp it again and if, it, if any of them don't stamp properly then I can just re-stamp it okay because the paper hasn't moved it's still in the corner and I'm just setting it up each time so I'm just going to bring this down it's a really good little technique that you can do with the Stamparatus did you know that some of our stamps we've had a couple I haven't been paying a lot of attention to what's new in the like in the new catalog but some of the stamps are the perfect placement that when you use the Stamparatus bits it perfectly lines up like we used to have one that was there was two trees and a hammock in the middle and the hammock was exactly I think three places apart so that you could make it perfect every time let's move that up do you think whoever's getting this card would get the message that they're strong and brave and they've got this I think they would because you're telling them about five times in fact I think you're telling them exactly five times there we go like that see that so it's cool if you just want to say you know happy birthday all the way down the page or or something like that you've got a message that is that looks really good when you use it repeatedly um hellos are good for that sort of thing there's all sorts of things yes hinge stamping exactly that's what it's called and it's it's very, very cool, and it's one of my favourite things that the Stamparatus does. There's a few things that really does well. One, another one I love is what we did before, making a template and making it so that, um, you know, that you can cut out a heap of blanks and then then sit down. And if you were, if you were making 100 Christmas cards and you wanted them to all be the same or making cards for a swap or something and you are going to make 25 of them or something like that, 
it's perfect because you just, you know, you cut your book into 25 blanks or your 100 blanks, whatever it is, and then just stamp them all repeatedly with your, with, with your Stamparatus, which is pretty cool. All right. So now I've got this. I'm thinking I'm just going to, because I'm lazy, I'm going to grab some white paper. I'm just thinking how big, yeah, that's about right. Let's, let's start with, I'm going to make this 10 centimetres and we'll see how wide is it. Seven wide, okay. So let's see. So I've just lost, <laughs> I've just lost a whole bunch of these, but I'm not worried about that because you still got one at the top there. So that's kind of cool. Let's put this on here. And of course, we have to use, because I love it so much, the Gentle Wave stamp set. Now, you can, when you're using a big background stamp like this, you can use a block. And only the biggest block, our F block, is the one that's going to fit this. That's what the size of this, you need a giant one of these because the stamp is so big. But of course, the other thing we can do is we can use our Stamparatus again. So... Let me grab another plate or I can grab the same plate as we just had because we're not using that anymore. So let's bring that in. All right, so I want this to be Let's see. It's always easiest. Let's get this off. These magnets are so strong, you really need a bit of muscle to, to get them where you want them. Now, I'm not going to use a magnet in this case because I'm just going to put it here. There is a, there is a couple of ways you can handle this. You can either mark where it is just in case it, you need to put in another piece later. So I can put like little pencil marks. This is just a bit of grid paper that I'm using here. So, you know, I can put a little mark there so I can see where that goes if I want to. And I'm using the grids on my paper. And I'm going to be putting this, deciding how far up to do it, about here. And I'm using my grid to get that lined up straight. I'm going to bring this over, push, pick up my piece. Now, so long as my paper stays in the same place, um, that will work. The other option is you get a bigger piece, you push it into the corner because the corner is really, really handy for making sure things, the placement is correct, um, and then you cut your piece out later. That's the other option. So, okay, so I'm going to start with my lighter colour and I'm going to ink this up with Balmy Blue. Some of you may have seen me do this before with this stamp. It's a really nice stamp. We don't need the whole thing, but... I think I'm inking it all up anyway. And then we're going to have some Misty Moonlight. Which I'm kind of going over the balmy blue a bit. So they're going to go from one colour into the next. And just because we can, I'm just going to add a little bit of navy down the bottom. Put my lids on. So I don't put my fingers in them because that's something that happens, isn't it? Anybody else end up with inky fingers every time they stamp? Especially with Night and Navy. Night and Navy is one of those colours that gets everywhere. I don't know why. It just does. All right, I'm going to bring this over and give this a good old push. Now, if you need to, you can stand up to do this to get a little bit more um, oomph. But if you use the heel of your hand, make sure you're getting really, really good positioning. And then you probably won't need to do it again. And I think that looks pretty nice. So you can see it's darker down the bottom. The colour kind of moves up. Let's move that out of the way. All right. So this is looking like this. And let's have a little look now at our boat because I think the boat is going to look super super cute on here don't you I'm deciding whether I'm going to stamp it on here or whether I'm going to um actually 
I saw a really great idea. Some of you may follow Patty Bennett. Does anyone know Patty Bennett? So Patty did something really clever today that I haven't seen before. And I'm thinking I might use it with this card. And I thought, wow, what a great idea to that. I would never have seen that. Okay, so what I've done is I've found the join at the back of a stamp. I'm going to take the whole stamp off. So it's stuck to my finger. I'm getting a D block because that's a good size for this. I'm going to put it down and I'm going to stick the whole stamp to the block. This is not the bit that I'm just showing you how to put how I put my stamps together. Okay, then because I've already started peeling this off, I can just peel that. Now I get my boat, my Viking boat. Now the bit that I want to show you that Patty was doing is she takes this bit off and then she keeps it. I've never kept these. Anyone ever kept these backings? I just put that over there. I'm going to come back to that later. Now the boat goes this way. I'm going to turn this over and because this is see-through I can now position this perfectly onto the stamp. Now I did a whole video about this for anyone who's interested and wants to see it again. It's a few months ago so you can always go back and see. Yep and then this is now stuck. Okay. So I'm deciding, am I going to stamp straight or am I going to put it on and then, because I'm sort of tempted to put it on, hmm, I'm deciding whether to stamp straight on or whether I'm going to put it onto another piece and then cut it out and stick it on. Hmm. Yeah, we could do that. But this is, I'll show you in a second what Patty did. It was kind of clever. Okay, I've never seen this done before. Let's go with our navy blue. Yes, the backing's used as a mask. Exactly. That's what I saw and I'd never seen that done. Had you seen that before, Jean? Yeah, me too, Cheryl. Always getting a mess with Night of Navy. Right. Isn't that a nice stamp? It's a really fun stamp. So I'm actually going to cut this out. So while I'm doing this, does anyone have any questions for me? Anyone have any, any exciting news, things that are going on in their world? I'll tell you what's exciting for me at the moment. I hope everyone knows that right now it's celebration. Did you guys know that? Celebration goes all of January and all of February. Now here in Australia, we had a little bit of a hiccup at the beginning of Celebration where there was almost no Celebration items available, which is not a good way to start Celebration. But because of the whole supply, um, the global shipping crisis and things just not arriving when they're supposed to anywhere, um, that left us without most of our Celebration items. So with that slow start, also we had quite a number of mini catalogue items that weren't available. They're all available now. The celebration items are all available. Hooray! And also the um, all the mini catalogue items are now available, unless they've sold out again since then. But last time I looked, they were, everything was there. So the particular we were waiting for the New Horizons paper, that's all in. That whole New Horizons bundle is now available. So very excited about all of those things because I had lots of customers waiting for them. <laughs> um, and um, I'm very excited that now we have everything available for everyone. The other thing is we have right now an amazing joining special. Does anyone know about that? So our amazing joining special is you buy the kit for the normal price, $169, and you get $235 worth of product, which you always do. You know, it's always good, always a good deal. But right now, Celebration, they're going to throw in three, two free stamp sets of your choice. So like I said before, my job is to help you guys get the most value you possibly can, and there is nothing better value than the kit. The kit is the best value thing we have. Um and you can get discounts on all your orders. And if you're regularly spending more money than $169, which I know I've got customers out there that are, you definitely need to do yourself a favor and have a think about the kit because it's awesome. And if you have any questions, just ask. There is absolutely nothing you can't ask about that. Um, that's my job. 
The rainbow bundle's not in stock at the moment. Ah, well, that's annoying. Is it the dies that are missing or the stamp set, Megan? Actually, now that you've said that, I'm wondering if I did know that. Yes, thank you, Jean. Yeah, I'm happy they extended it as well. It just, um, it was getting really frustrating that we just didn't, you know, we couldn't get going. <laughs> but thankfully, now it's all there. So I'm very happy about that. And it wasn't Stampin' Up's fault. It was no one's fault. It's just this silly shipping crisis that has just pretty much caused problems everywhere. So there is no dies for this in case you're wondering. <laughs> Quite obviously, that's why I'm sitting here cutting these out. But if you're like me, I actually like fussy cutting. I find it really uh, relaxing. And I like it like sitting down in front of the TV and just doing it in bulk. Sometimes if I'm doing, um, I don't do swaps very often. The only swaps I actually do are usually the incentive trip swaps, which means I haven't done any swaps for a really long time because we haven't been on a trip for a few years because they had to cancel them all. Um, but um, when I have those coming up, I usually, you know, organise something that I have to cut and just sit down in front of the TV and cut and cut and cut. And it's very, very relaxing. I like it. But I know not everybody does. Anyone else crazy like me? it's a really good bundle Megan um the rainbow bundle I have been using it a lot and it's lovely I've um I just did a YouTube tutorial a couple of days ago with a it's a flat card with the rainbow bundle and it turned out really cute all right now I've gone to the trouble of doing this so I guess we are definitely doing that but look at how nice it looks on the water there isn't that good? So this is what Patty was doing though. I'm just going to, I did start to tell you about this and I think it's really, really cool. She stamped it like this, right? And then she used this bit that she cut off or that she took off the back and she put it over the top and then she got her blending brush. Let's get one um, and let's use bumblebee ink because it's a nice color and then she went over the top like this so that it goes all the way around and follows the shape isn't that cool I'd never thought to do that so this is a really cool thing that you can do I mean I love masking anyway it's one of my favorite well I go through stages but it's one of my favorites at the moment and so you can add a mask so that it goes around your piece it's really really quick to to add color behind something like that isn't that cool <laughs> Cherie have I fed the cat I sent my son off you must have missed that bit where my son came into the room and took the cats so all right so this is going to go here but before this does go here I'm going to do a couple of things I am going to use my blending brush I'm going to get an edge and I'm going to put it along the top here and I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to create a bit of a sunset because we like we like sunsets with blends markers I'm not going to go down really really close to the horizon because I want it to look a little bit lighter there okay and then let's pick a different color Maybe we could go magenta madness or fresh, fresh freesia. Let's try that, and then I might add some magenta madness in. So I'm going to start from the top. Um, more color. I'm not going quite as low, so it looks like there's still yellow down towards the horizon. Looks like I might need some more, um, might need to re-ink my Fresh Freesia. I have been using it a lot lately and it seems like it's not especially inky. But at the top, I'm going to add a bit of polished pink. And at the very top, and we're going to come in with some nice colour there. You can see how often I use my blending brushes. I just I just told you how much I love them. And this is why. Because you can do so many cool things with them. Ah, see here. <laughs> oh, 
Um, yeah, he t he took the cats. I think he briefly. I don't know if everyone got to see Crumpet, but Crumpet got um, dipped in front of the camera very very quickly. So this is going to be like this. It almost makes you want to be a Viking, don't you think? What color shall we use on our on our piece? You know what? I'm going to use one of the new. Oh, will I? Let me see. I've got soft suede and crumb cake here, which might be good for this for the boat. So let's start with crumb cake. And I'm going to colour that. I'm actually going to come in with my thinner one because it's a little bit fine detail. I almost can't help myself and neither can anyone else when they're colouring. It's it's really hard to keep talking because you've got to concentrate and hold your tongue just right. So I'm going to add a soft suede along the bottom because that's a bit darker. And maybe the light crumb cake up here, up the top. But what colour should we do the sail? Anyone got any suggestions? Under wet cement. I'm sure that's not true. Would we go blue and white stripes? Would that work for a Viking? What's the what were Viking colours? Does anyone know? Should it be red? Oh, red and white stripes for the sale. That's capital letters. I'm assuming that means that I need to really know my. So do we go real red or do we go poppy parade? I think real red. Let's try that. Red and white stripes. Is this Viking colours? Actually, I'm going to use my thin one again. Everyone's saying red, so it looks like I obviously don't know my Viking lore very well. Thank you for your help, guys. My daughter does a bit of history. Um, you know, she loves history, and she probably could have told me that. Okay. Does that look right? Is there anything else I need to add? Do I need to add? How's it looking? Would you think that looked like a, would you be scared if you saw that Viking um, boat coming towards you? I'm going to use some mini dimensionals, I think, behind here. And maybe a couple of big ones, majors as I like to call them. So we'll put a big one of those here and one there. Coming together, red and white is correct. Look at that. We all learned something tonight. Thank you, guys. <laughs> You Googled it, Helen. Well, I'll know for next time. And we're going to put, pop it down here so it's just below the waterline so it looks like it's it's coming towards us. That looks really cool. Do we like this? I do. I think it looks really good. All right. So this is going to go on here. And we've got your strong and brave. You've got this up the top. I feel like it needs... I feel like it needs um, something across here, like maybe a ribbon or maybe, hmm, I don't know. What do we need, guys? Maybe I could use my, my thin ribbon. That might be the go because I don't feel like it needs a lot.
And now that I've got this on here, I'm wondering if we should have a piece of misty moonlight behind it. Let's have a look. Yes, it does need that. All right, let's see how big this is. We said it was seven wide. That's oh, not, not quite. So seven and a half ish and seven and a half by ten and a half. So let's have a look here. And ten and a half. Let's see if that's right. I think that looks good. Put this on. You know what I love about Friday nights and Sunday nights? I love that I knit, well, I sometimes have an idea of what I want to use or what I want to, um, I might sometimes even know what I'm going to create, but quite often I don't. And those are actually the nights I enjoy the most. I enjoy the not knowing and seeing what happens. So what do you guys think? Do we like, do we like this? See, now that that's a bit more, that's a bit more solid with that piece behind it. So now... It would be easier if I want to add my backing behind. Yes, it looks much better, doesn't it? So if I put this over here, so what I find quite good for, I add just a bit of adhesive on either side so that when I put my ribbon around, it sticks to it. there and then I can go ahead and put my dimensionals on now when I have ribbons sitting there like this I also as just to add a bit of strength I add dimensionals on top of the ribbon and that helps it keep it keep in place so it's actually not doing the dimensional job as much it is as it is doing the make it stick job like that and then I'm going to grab a bit extra and we're going to tie this around because it's not stuck on top and I'm thinking a bow is too feminine for this Viking card because that that would be kind of weird Vikings don't do bows do they no they don't so I'm just going to tie this off I think Viking would do something terrible like take my head off if I suggested that they should have a bow. Just like that. A little knot I think is better. So there we go. What do we think? Do we like it? Something different, that's for sure. This is a different set. I mean, I don't think I could create the same sort of card as the Blessings of Home. I mean, they couldn't be more different really, could they? So let's have a look and see what we did tonight. We did these two cards. Let me close this up and get rid of these. And that's what we ended up with. And I had no idea what these were going to look like at the start of the night. All I knew is what sets I wanted to use. So there we go. How do we do tonight, guys? Do you like these? Which is your favourite? Oh, you're doing a challenge card. I'm going to do that tomorrow, Cheryl. In fact, I'm actually thinking, what do you think of this idea? I'm thinking about going live in my team group and making my challenge card whilst wearing the outfit that I'm using for inspiration. So anyone who's in my team, if you're around tomorrow afternoon, that's what I'm thinking about doing. So um, or maybe maybe in the morning, maybe in the afternoon, I'll, I'll see how I'm feeling. But I thought that might be fun. You like the Vikings, Megan? <laughs> Thank you, Cherie. That's nice. I like them both, but they're totally different. You couldn't ask for more different cards, even though we both we use blue in both cards and Misty Moonlight, but they're totally different. And I like the sunset in this one. I think that turned out really fun. So there we go. Love this Gentle Waves stamp. I love this one. I think that's beautiful. 
You like the navy one? When you say navy, you mean this one, right? <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I hope everyone's going to have a great weekend. Um, I'll pop um, I'll pop a description if anyone's wanting to be part of the class. Either shoot me a message, or you can head over. I'll put the link in the uh, description on YouTube, or on it's also on my blog. Um, how to go about joining the class? There's a PayPal button there if you wanted to buy the class for twenty bucks. Um, and otherwise. Um, you are very, very welcome to um, put an order in and get the full supply pack if you're in Australia and that's what you'd like to do. Okay, I hope everyone is well. Stay safe wherever you are and um, I'll be back on Sunday night for those of you who are around. Okay, see you soon. Bye-bye.